3, 2, 1, welcome to the Nord Pod. Hello, August. Marriage. Yes. Yes. I'm so excited today. Thank you. Uh, we're going to talk about something I don't know anything about, but I have a lot of meaning about it, so this is going to be exciting. Okay. Yoga. What is yoga? <laughs> Okay, let's maybe try and describe yoga in a few words, although it's almost impossible. Let's try. Yoga is the word that is originally from Sanskrit language of India. Sanskrit language? Sanskrit is a language. It's a very, very old language, which also formed the basis of many European languages. Okay. We can talk about that later. And uh, so in that language, yoga, yolk, is the root word, like the egg yolk. Okay, I understand. So yoga is to unite, is to yolk the egg with its layers inside, how they yolk with each other. Mm -hmm. So yoga in that way is the yolking of the body, mind and spirit. So they all are in harmony and in union okay so yoga means union yeah get the body in balance body in balance and also mind in balance and our emotions too so all, all of our three dimensional being that is body mind emotions let's call it spirit is the union of them where they talk to each other in a harmonious way and not in opposition with each other it's the work to do that is called yoga. <laughs> but to get the understanding of yoga, I think it's always proper to uh, address the start. Where did where is the offspring of yoga? Where did it come from? How long have it been there? You okay. know, because when I say yoga today, I can see many many different things. If I go on YouTube, some some group is going this direction, this direction. But where did it all start? Originally, yoga came from India. And its history, as we read it, it goes back to 5,000 years, but this is the written resources of yoga. And we believe it can actually go even way back from there. The first original writings of the teachings of yoga goes back to 5,000 years. Uh, and previous to that, they were you know, writing this information on the palm leaves in the, you know, in the jungle. Okay. Um, but then they were all put into a collected teaching by a person called Patanjali, which in yoga we revere a lot to. He is revere the grand a lot, what do you mean? Respect a lot. Respect, okay. He is the original person who brought together the teachings of yoga into a you know, readable form. And they become the yoga sutras, which you can find them as books today. Sutras? The Sutra is like, um, like the verses the yoga verses the yoga bible yoga bible if you like and uh, yoga sutras but it is worth mentioning already yoga is not a religion thank you Mm. then we have something to talk about (laughs) (laughs) that's true (laughs) I think uh, uh, God Buddha Mm. that's a little bit off for me Mm -hmm. but I believe in myself and I believe in you and I believe in my fellow human yeah. I'm really, really strong in that. And I think we have the power to do good. I think we have power to do bad. And uh, We are both. We are both, yeah. yeah. And we also have the power to balance it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I don't think Jesus Christ is going to do that for me. Individually, That's I think we are responsible for our own <coughs> growth. We may have influencers, inspirations and teachers around us, but the work is individual. Nobody can save us. Nobody can save us. I think I'm with you on that one. Yeah. And yoga is the self-effort to save oneself. Yeah. So if I can put it that way. Mm. But the the start of the history, we go 5,000 years back, mm-hmm. yeah? Well, what was the outspring? Or what, what, do you have the like stories to explain for me how this... From those times? Yeah, what, what um, how this... Co- well, I think poverty was significant at the time. Yeah. Only the king and the royal families would live in a standard way. Is it the so same, same way now, if uh, you look at the <laughs> government? <laughs> yeah, there are extremities <laughs> between the two. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So the Indian people originally who were inspired by Buddha's teachings. Buddha? Buddha. 
Buddha comes in the picture when it comes to yoga too. Okay. Well, Buddha I actually do like. You do? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And What's travel like a lot. No, I think it, I travel a lot in uh, in the Asian country. Uh, yeah, okay. And uh, I met a lot of monks and I'm also pacificated and gone through in temples when they're singing uh, with the tongues and stuff. Yeah. I think it's quite cool. And nobody tried it's to pressure. It's peaceful. Yeah, they don't try to pressure me mm. in mm. no direction. They're just happy to see me and uh, where are you coming from? And, mm-hmm. and quite polite people. The Do way you mean you felt that from other teachings perhaps? Not from so much Buddhism? Yeah, Norwegian school. We have to sing to God before we eat. Right. Uh, mandatory about religion. Mm. Uh, I think uh, a lot of the priests, if somebody die, they don't talk about the person and celebrate his life. They're more in to talk about mm. Jesus Christ and God. Mm. Mm-hmm. So, so, and that's a form of pressuring because not many people are walking in the doors in the church, and when they first have people in church, they're going to try to break our neck. We talk mumbo jumbo in my book. Uh, instead of treasuring you, if you are lying in a classroom, I think we have to celebrate your life and what mm-hmm. you're done, mm-hmm. and uh, show our respect for your family. Yeah. Uh, not to do about something that in Bible for the country. That's yeah. me. Yeah. No. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Sorry, mm-hmm. Buddha. Mm-hmm. Buddha. So before before Buddha came out, Hinduism was very effective in India, Hinduism, but they didn't call it Hinduism until the British came and labeled it that way. This is important to note. Hinduism, explain. Hinduism, Hinduism as a religion, uh, as I'm sure you have heard, it's the religion of India. Yeah. Most people in India are uh, Hindus. Now, Hinduism, uh, well, the teachings of Hinduism is very similar to yoga because yoga formed the early prescriptions of Hinduism, we can say that. Okay. So I, I guess when people talk about whether yoga is a religion or not, they refer to Hinduism because there's a lot of similarities of yogic life to the Hindu, the Hindu life. However, yoga sits separate in, in many ways. Now, as I understand, there was no religion as Hinduism until English came to India and they have realized there were a lot of diverse uh, spiritual you know sort of aspects of india which they didn't understand in the west they have the jains in the east they have the sikhs and then how do we call them all under one name okay. all these weird spiritual practices that people do in the forests what do we call them so it was the british actually that has come up with the name hinduism it didn't exist before. <laughs> so it's in one way a little bit the same. We, we did believe in Thor and, mm-hmm. and Freya and we had the, the, right. the Celtic gods, yeah? Yeah. And at one stage, uh, a quite forceful mm-hmm. uh, religion come and took over Norway. And That's because right. they, they didn't want people to do have different gods, they wanted to reunite everything. And and we celebrated it in, uh, in the history books in Norway. Yeah. It's, it's a great battle and... They were resistant to that as well, wasn't it? Was it that great, yeah? No, yeah, yeah, for sure, resistant, yeah. Especially from Hamar, as I understand, yeah. was one of the cities, yeah. Mm. Mm-hmm. So the English... English wanted to label these different traditions that India has been living for thousands of years. And Hinduism <coughs> as a word actually came up from their own. So Hinduism as we know it today is called that way by the British. It's an interesting fact. Yeah, sure. So going back to yoga and Buddha's role in yoga, um, Hinduism, as you may know, is based on the class system. How you are born and which family you are born into is going to determine the rest of your life. Okay. Nowadays, it may not be as strong as an influence, but it still exists in India. It does unless you're educated, unless you're broken free somehow from that way of thinking that is thousand years old, maybe more. Um, now, Buddha rejected that idea. So in that way... Who Hindu was Buddha? Buddha was a prince. He was the son of a king on the border of Nepal, Nepal. from India. Beautiful and country. Uh, beautiful country. Um, 
Now, his father was quite protective of him, so he never let him out of the palace doors, because if he did, all he could see was suffering. There was a lot of disease and poverty and death. So as a father, I think he just wanted to protect his son. Naturally. Um, naturally. And as he grew up, he started to get bored of the gardens of the palace with these beautiful flowers and the elephants and whatever you can think of. It that was too beautiful. That is too, too beautiful. And at the time he was married, he, he even had children. Um, but then one day he, d- he said to his wife, listen, I have to leave this palace and see you know, what is beyond the wall. Um, and he left with, n- with nothing and he had no skills either to, s- to survive outside, I guess, because he never exposed himself to that, but he still did it. And after a lot of soul searching, he has realized that there are facts of life that is the same for everyone and that is to born that is to live and that is to get old and to die and to be sick same as today cycle of suffering as he has called it uh, so he, he called suffering. it cycle of suffering cycle of suffering he also included on top of facts of life as life and death you know these are the facts but he also added that Impermanence is a is a fact of life. So nothing goes forever. Impermanence. Impermanence. When something is permanent, it is forever. Okay. Yeah. So impermanent. He has also realized that this life is not permanent. Nothing is permanent. And this is another reason for suffering for human. That we can't go forever. Again, relating to death, maybe physically, but also the <coughs> you know, re- relationships can die. Things can die. Yeah. And, um, and his third teaching was that there is a way out of this suffering. And he wanted to explore that himself. His way of doing that was to live with minimal and to expose himself to a lot of reality of life that his father would have considered as maybe cruel. Um, as he developed in his spiritual journey of understanding is this you know fact can we escape suffering can we escape suffering can we be liberated from the negative patterns of our mind and he did some severe practices to achieve that he he suffered himself without food or water for days and he meditated for a long time and not moving at all just sitting there at the same time, not suppressing his needs, you know, this is the way we deal with suffering these days. We can suppress it, but he he didn't. He just sat with it, sat with it. Enjoyed that. the suffering. Perhaps enjoyment, it or yeah, that, it's yeah. somewhere there. But um, and in his last meditation, he promised himself that he wouldn't move under that tree. He would sit in meditation for 40 days and he would be liberated. That was his goal. Okay. That I'm not gonna go anywhere. I'm gonna sit here and I go beyond my mind through my meditation. Meditation on existence. Yeah. Who am I? Where do I come from? Where am I going? Now these are the three fundamental, you know, sort of inquiries when we come to yoga. Or at least they have advised us to do so. Every individual should ask those questions themselves and everyone does at some point. Yeah, I think Two quite important questions, is, or two important points in life is, is the day you get born and the day you understand why you did get born. Yeah. I don't, uh, I, d- I, ha- I haven't come there yet. I don't know what's purpose. the reason, yeah. my purpose. purpose. And it's and a huge thing for, a huge subject for yoga as well. Because that's quite purpose. hard b- if you don't have purpose in life. Uh, the life is not that enjoyable. Because mm-hmm. if I have purpose on the road, the days are flying, I'm enjoying myself. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's yeah. in the word purpose, you know. Yeah. But in my life, I can. my purpose today is we're going to make this podcast. And when I finish that, that purpose is gone, you know. So I always have to chase the new purpose. Mm-hmm. So I'm l- really looking forward to the day uh, when I understand the purpose of my existence. 
the ghost and the dead may you be the hunt. Alone. It's been a question for many people in the recent years. What is my purpose? What is my purpose? Because if you look in the nature, everything has a purpose. For sure. And as human, we, <coughs> s- we certainly do. Based on our individual skills and what we can offer to the world, we can, I think, identify our, our purpose very easily. However, our purpose may not provide us with what we need for life. And I think that's where we get confused. Yeah. That financial aspect of, say you are, you, know, you are born an artist, but if it doesn't feed you, th- this is the dilemma, you know? Uh, to me, finding your purpose is not that complicated, but to live that takes a lot of bravery. It takes a lot of entrepreneurship. It takes a lot of um, self-confidence and also the trust in life, I guess, as well, because we can't do it all. There's sometimes this unseen influence that pushes us in that direction. Yeah, because and, and that's my mind, because my mind, I think my mind sometimes... Uh, just uh, make a false purpose because then I'm feeling I have a purpose but my, my mind or or I want something and and that purpose can stay with me for 10 years I'm gonna I'm gonna achieve this something like this but I don't think that's my real purpose I mm. think sometimes that's something my mind or uh, the society around me just gave me mm-hmm. or I took it or created it and uh, and that's made a lot of trouble for me, because then I have a strong purpose and I don't take care I- of everything around me. Sometimes you know, because the purpose is so strong, and I'm so driven to to mm-hmm. reach that purpose. Mm-hmm. And when I come to the point, I reach it. I don't feel anything better. I'm the same August. If I can perhaps bring a little clarification there between goal. And purpose. Yes. There, there, you know, there is a difference there. Purpose, if you are living your purpose, you don't really do much effort on it. It just comes to you naturally. And that's my difference between the goal and the purpose. Goal, we must act <coughs> for, that we must work towards. And they are sort of impermanent. They come and go. Mm-hmm. But with purpose, you use minimal effort and you still deliver your best because you were meant to do it. So you doing your podcast, I'm sure it feels effortless to you mm. and you feel like um, you know, you're know you enjoying the protest. This can be a purpose. Yeah, in, in many ways because I think a lot, of course, why I do this, what is the purpose, or what is the goal, and I don't really have one, you know. I don't want to uh, be number one. You do it because you like it. Yeah, and, and, I, and I feel it's right, because mm-hmm. uh, I think as long as I have the opportunity to share a microphone with you and share a microphone with different people, uh, in one way I think that's good thing to do mm-hmm. because then people can communicate and they can learn from each other sure, sure. Uh, serving is an aspect of purpose as well what we do should serve others yeah so if you talk about spreading information <coughs> you know with with your podcast then it serves the humanity yeah. so serving others with our best skills is what makes up the purpose but it should benefit others it shouldn't just benefit us you know, yeah, as individual, yeah. <coughs> it should be a greater purpose in that. Um, that's my understanding of mm. that. So yeah. it's kind of bigger than you. What you For do sure, is yeah. bigger than you. Yeah. Mm. It's, yeah it's, uh, it's a little bit funny when you think about it like that because, Sam, if you have, uh, or many people who have podcasts and stuff, you know, they, they make money on it and, and the, and it's it's a, like a way of living, but so far I more or less refuse to make money on it. So I only spend time and money on it, and and I haven't done anything to to make it a business. And and the reasoning is, I think the day the podcast or what I'm gonna feed my daughters or pay my electric bill, if that's pretends or, or hanging on the podcasts. 
it's not going to be uh, real anymore because then I I'm going to be biased, you know, because then, then I... When you feel the pressure. Then my personal yeah. needs or something going to pressure me to who going to yeah. talk to, what going to talk, because then I have some sponsors. But in, 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 in the same way, I know if I'm going to go further beyond mm -hmm. with it, at one time, at one point, I need to make think about money as well, because uh, if you're going to reach more people or you're going to make something better, you all because you need money for everything. Yeah, in that so way, if you find a purpose that is your purpose, what you can offer to the world, and you make money out of it, you know, for your income, mm. that's a pretty special place to be. Yeah, if and you can get to. And I think if I don't stress it, I think. Yeah. In one way, it's going to fall in my lap yeah. when yeah. when it's correct, when it's time for yeah. it. Yeah. If, yeah. if 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 it's a meaning on it, it's gonna it's gonna happen. And until then, I just gonna enjoy the pod. It usually happens that way, actually. Yeah, yeah. it's crazy. It just can develop itself, <coughs> you know, into places that you never imagined, mm. which has been in my case yeah. <laughs> with yoga. <laughs> yeah. But mm. back to Buddha. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I was just gonna sort of mention. Buddha came out with his teaching, which he didn't call Buddhism, by the way. These are all names that were given by the people who follow them. Okay. Just like Jesus didn't want to, you know, create a Christianity out of his teachings, just like that. People later on called it Buddhism, but Buddha as a person, he simply was not comfortable with the Hinduist approach of the class system. He didn't believe that we should be segregating people into different castes. So in that way, Buddha's teachings came as a rebel against the Hinduism. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Even he was a son of a king. Yeah. And everything was lying in by front of his feet. By the time he had his teachings, he was no longer the son of the king. He was completely a wanderer yeah. on the street. He had no liaison. And I'm not sure if he ever went back to the palace, actually. Well. Um, or to his family. Um, so Buddha resisted <coughs> the idea of human not being being equal. He didn't want that, and therefore his teachings were offered. Um, but most of the teachings that he has given us is very much in correlation with yoga as well. So I don't know when those teachings were you know, sort of taken from one another. That I'm not sure. But if you look at the Yoga Sutras, there's a lot of similarity to the facts of life, as he suggested, you know, there is suffering. Nothing is, you know, permanent. And there is a way out of suffering. So yoga applies those teachings too. Hmm. That, we, that we can liberate ourselves from the cycle of suffering through purifying the mind, to realizing who we really are. And by that I mean we are not our identities, we are not our egos, we are not who we, who we think we are. There is an I inside when listened to is beyond these descriptions or beyond these limitations. It doesn't live, it doesn't die. It is endless. It, it has no beginning or an end. So there is a beautiful free aspect within us that is away from the identifications with the external world. It is simply silent. It is in the background. It is very spacious. It's very peaceful and joyful. So much, you know, so much joyful. Um, if we can learn to connect to that part of ourselves. Mm which, you know, yoga teaches in the main. Uh, many times I'm um, like mind gaming. If if I freed myself from everything, just move down the Bahamas, whatever, have a small island, maybe a small cafeteria, <coughs> maximum 10 seats, something like this. Only thing I do, I get some chicken and, and just <laughs> yeah. no Facebook, no telephone, no nothing. I think maybe the first three to six months, uh, I would feel uncomfortable, and but I'm I'm sure. I, in the same way, if I many time before, if I travel away and I stay away for maybe more than one month, I rediscover August, because for everything is around me, it changed my way to thinking, seeing thing. But if I go away from all, all I know around me, 
I'm coming back to myself in one way. And sometimes I think if I've just moved away to far away island something, I've, after six months I probably had. I yeah, have done that. Uh, I would. I, I think I, I would enjoy that better than being here, even if I had been a millionaire. Because the thing, the everything around me owns me in one way, you know. What really owns us is our imposed data that we have <coughs> been hmm. implied on. It's um, many Indian yogis have books upon. Are we truly original? Are we truly? Um, are we really who we are? Because our education system, our family upbringing and our culture, the land we are born into, the language we speak can form us as an individual. When are we ever free from these things? Never. 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 In that way, yoga is not about gaining something, but to reduce yourself from those aspects. To the point you are naked with your self. But can we imagine that? That's not even how the I this thing called that I call marriage does it exist? <laughs> yeah. You know. I believe maybe uh, if it's going to be the day I die or or later on in my life, my when my daughters is growing up, I'm ready to flee and just try something new. You know, because I have one life as I know now. But when you say yoga and for me, I'm a simple guy, and when I hear yoga, it's a bit, it's mumbo jumbo. It's uh, mm. lighting candles. It smells. Uh, it's uh, more or less hippies. You have uh, guys who are just lazy. They don't even clean themselves. You have dreadlocks. They don't cut their beard. Uh, more for me, it's yoga is it's like crazy house. You name yoga, but in another way, I can see like even Joe Rogan. You have people I really much admired, yeah. and Scientists. they and they say yoga have been a, like a big, big breaker for them. You know, so so I understand sure. yoga has a place, and uh, this would be fun because when I talk to you now, I think this summer, I was a little bit of a little bit. Of not in balance or what, what do you want? I, I didn't, I wasn't in a good spot inside myself. And then I actually was Googling yoga hamar. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I didn't go through with it. But then I was thinking, okay, maybe it's time to try something new because if the thing I do now is not taking me where I want to go, it may be time to try something mm -hmm. different. Mm -hmm. But the thing who keep me away from it yeah. is those guys with the dreadlocks and don't cut their nails. You've been watching a lot of documentaries on India, I think. <laughs> yeah, but you can see them in Oslo yeah. as well, you know. Okay. I, I, I did, for me, it's okay. Just don't. They don't care about nothing. They just uh, care about themselves and enjoy the life and try not to do no, nothing to help the side. Uh, yeah. yeah. But but I that's a little bit okay. out on the limit, but. Is yoga that? What, what is yoga? Is it is it, you have different branches or what? The yoga as we understand it today is mainly focusing on the body work. You have a lot of you know yoga studios with different styles of yoga. Yeah. And there are so many different styles of yoga. The original yoga is Hatha yoga from 5,000 years ago, you know, from, uh, from those times of the main teacher, you know, Patanjali. Hatha yoga was the mother of yoga and all other yoga, I think last time I counted, there was 40 different yoga styles, yeah. including wine yoga, and wine goat yoga. yoga, you do yoga with goats, <laughs> okay, okay, <laughs> things yeah. like that. So, but really mother of yoga is uh, Hatha yoga and Hatha yoga advises us that we must begin with the body. Okay. So in that way, yoga is perceived <coughs> a lot as a physical exercise recently. Uh, there are soft style of physical exercises and there are dynamic forms of yoga. Both are available. Some likes to sweat and really to get strong and, you know, bendy. And some likes to just have it like a gentle 
some breathing exercises and some movements that will help you feel re you know relaxed so there are many forms we begin with the body because we are in the body and if we don't enjoy being in this body in the way of health and balance none of it really matters so we begin with the body as we begin yoga we understand there's a lot of tension in the body which we call stiffness but yes. really what stiffness is which most people say i'm so stiff and this is you know why i need yoga uh, that stiffness is an accumulation of our lifestyle for sure to sit a lot and even to cycle a lot or to run a lot which can create stiffness in the muscles however if we continue doing that we will become so rigid so rigid that stiffness in the body will also influence stiffness in the mind for sure flexibility is a two-way thing flexibility is not just physical mental flexibility also so as we work with the body our mind starts to release some of its inherent tension that is stored in the joints that is stored in the muscles over the years again lifestyle the food we eat the way we move or don't move and what happens if we don't empty those tensions over time? They become solid. They affect the way we think. Mm. So yoga's uh, intention is to increase the blood circulation in the body, which ultimately is the only reason we exercise, really, whether it's running or yoga. We do, we do these things to increase our blood flow. Yep. When the blood flows in an efficient way in the body, we don't get the disease and we feel we can think better, we can feel better. So we begin with the body. Um, then there are other stages. We go into the mental aspects a little more. We sit in meditation. And the reason why meditation doesn't come first is that a person who is not relaxed cannot sit in meditation. So the body must be relaxed. And we do lots of exercises for that. And then we have breathing exercises. And that is key really for yoga. If you look at the circus people, most of them are doing positions that are similar to yogic positions. So, you know, what is the difference being in a circus or on a yoga mat in that way? Is that um, it's not the positions that we achieve, it's the level of mind state that gets us there. Because some of these positions are quite of a challenge. It, it, re it re uh, requires significant levels of flexibility and strength. And, uh, and I must say strength. Yeah. Yoga is not just flexibility. <coughs> but what gets you into those positions that seem impossible to begin with is your mind state. There is a beautiful saying from one of the yoga masters, body is not stiff, mind is stiff. Mm. So we open up the mind. I know just uh, so people understand about the, the, the stiffness of the body and the mind um, the shrinks uh, will work with the mind of people <coughs> I heard some of them if you have somebody on suicide watch or, or they're breaking down really they say massage is a very dangerous thing to do because sometimes if somebody ha have a serious mental uh, breakdown or, or issue and you open up some of the Certain knots, like that, that. that can be it. They, they couldn't ready. be too much, yeah. Mm. So so even the modern day in shrinks same say, with say yoga, actually. Yeah, it's 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 the same. They said it's the mind is connected to the body. To the body. It's inseparable. In fact, we say that your body is a production of your mind. <coughs> yep. What does that mean? Your your mind is the one who will decide what to eat, for example. So if your body is a combination of all you have eaten over the years, yeah your mind makes up your body. Yeah. The mind is really first when it comes to these things and then the body forms in that way. Which we think the which we think the other way around. But uh, the thing you're talking about now is so, so important because when I made a picture of this uh, hippie, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you say okay, you have uh, seen a lot of documentaries and stuff. Mm -hmm. The thing is the way media or TV mm -hmm. is making if it's not extreme you don't film it because it's not mm -hmm. entertainment you know and I think the reason my mindset around yoga is because the only thing I've been shown 
is the extreme thing of it, you know, mm-hmm. uh, because it's not interesting to make TV or something you're going to make me good, you know. They have to show something, the guy who haven't cut his nail for 100 years or something, you know, mm-hmm. because it's sensational. So, and that I think you you guys who are doing yoga have a big, big work to do to broaden my mind and others' mind because even I understand that my mind, my body, uh, my emotionals, is important to work on. It is. Um, with regards to labeling things into certain boxes, I think we do that with everything. If I talk about, um, if I talk about uh, Zumba, <laughs> Zumba, we will have a generalization of Zumba too. Shaking ass. Probably. For me. Probably. <laughs> yeah. So, it's one thing to label but it's also one thing to allow yourself to explore things if we see the benefits of it. Most of my students are actually advised by their psychologist or their psychiatrist actually to come, which makes me very, very happy. Finally, psychology and psychiatry are understanding the benefits of yoga. Uh, There is a lot of change in perspective, I must say, in in Norway in the main. Uh, In America, as you know, millions of people are actually doing yoga huge numbers for sure huge numbers it's like it's like a millions I, uh, yeah, yeah. it's like i think they've asked you know have you have you ever done yoga and only a small <coughs> percentage said no hmm. so most people actually have done yoga in the us and across europe i think as humans we are seeking a way out of certain things to remember our original nature yeah. And it's been a question for centuries from different traditions. What is the source of human nature? Yoga is just another tool, I feel. One doesn't have to go as far with that question. One can simply focus on their body. They don't ever have to ask those questions. But some do. Hmm. Uh, each each to their own, you know. Whatever rocks your boat. <laughs> yeah, but I think... Um 2022, uh, the life we are living now. Uh, one of the thing I think make me think is struggling to adjust is uh, I'm a really really simple guy. I'm driven by from instincts, uh, a proper monkey ape. You know, I'm 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 a really really simple guy, mm-hmm. and when you take people, simple people like me, and you put that in a complex uh, community. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like letting a, like an elephant loose in a, in a glass, in China mm-hmm. story, yeah? Mm-hmm. And that's been a, like a problem for me all my mm-hmm. life. I, I, I don't fit in, you know, because I'm, I'm, not, I'm not cut to, to easy fit in in this life. Yogis also said the same. I would, I would. The yogis of India didn't fit in. No, you, if you put me mm-hmm. in in the the Viking area, gave me a sword, and something to drink on, I would fit straight in. Okay. Perfect for me. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. Eat, drink, fight, die. You're living That's in the wrong it. Times. <laughs> yeah, I, I I feel like this. Um, for have yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And now you have to be wary. If you speak something wrong, you offend somebody. Mm. You know, I, I think I'm, I'm just a simple, simple guy. I think most of ours are are very simple, but but the times we live in is very different than before. To be living in these times requires extra will and extra um, will to be here. Really, we receive a lot of information which our grandparents never did. We've never been as comfortable financially, most of us. We never lacked time as much. With all the technological developments, we never had less time. Um, It's a big world. It's a global world. That's, again, a lot of information. How does human handle that? How does human... In a way, we are all Buddhas. If Buddha means to know it all... Buddha is the awakened one who knows it all. Mm-hmm. We are all Buddhas at this time. Yeah, because the trouble today, you, you uh, with money, you can buy a house, but you cannot buy a home. 
Exactly, the words of Dalai Lama says that, yeah. And, and uh, We have bigger houses, but smaller families. We have more technology, but we are ignorant more than ever. There is that very dualistic thing going on with yeah. our reality, where we have it all, but we have none. That's crazy. It's, um, and we see that more in the more wealthy countries. I have felt that I had the opportunity to live in different countries, both in the extreme ways, like you know, some parts of Asia and now Norway, which you could say the opposite. Both countries have similarities, both cultures, where we are yearning <coughs> for something that our financials don't buy, or we have it all, but we have nothing. <laughs> Mm. A feeling of emptiness in a way that we are seeking to fill with something. And of course there are ways to fill it, whatever you like, but um, hopefully we choose the things that serve us and the world around us. Mm. Um, and that brings us a little bit back to, to Buddha again, because mm. if Buddha was the, um, the start of it all, and he and, uh, and went right and went left, and You talked before we go on the pod, find the balance. And that's... The middle path. The middle path, yeah. So if you're in a poor country, you have to find the middle path there. That's if right. you're in a rich country, you have to find... That's and right. And that's not easy to find. And that that's maybe the reason we feel empty. Because it's quite crazy to sit in this chair now in Norway. I can eat whatever I want. I have healthy kids. I have friends, opportunities, everything. But still inside, you have times you can feel empty inside, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's that's crazy because I have no reason mm -hmm. to feel that. Mm -hmm. I have everything. Not uh, to feel that way. Yeah, yeah, you have every reason not to feel that way, yeah. but somehow that's not the case. So what is that inherent emptiness that we are talking about? Is exactly <coughs> what Buddha talked about. Buddha talked about that, this feeling of emptiness. Hmm. He actually suggested that it's one of the precious feelings to feel empty and we should seek towards that, would you believe? Ooh. But the way he described I'm emptiness, <laughs> but the way he described emptiness was not coming from a place of lack. It was coming from a place of I am empty of my desires, I am empty of my projections. On a physiological level, if you compress the atom, it's 99% space. Yeah. So we are. We are, empty. we are empty we are empty this you know bone and flesh that is made of earth is only solid to a certain extent but at molecular level we are space space meaning not the space out there in the universe but space in between <coughs> the cells yeah, yeah the cells so in that way we are empty so the idea is to realize that this thing that i call full is empty oh. And people meditate for years on this concept to understand. It still forms the basis of Buddhism. The same same goes for the mind as well, you know, because if um, if you say something now today who offend me or make me angry or whatever, yeah, and I get a, a lot of emo uh, emotions around that, you know, and um, and I have a problem. I go home and a little bit angry about you and think about going to sleep. I notice that If I take time, a couple of step backs and ask, why did you react that way, August, you know? Maybe because I've um, uh, experienced something like this before, something like that, and maybe I have a side mm -hmm. inside myself. Uh, I don't like too much, and you show that side uh, and wake up some emotions, yes. and, and, yeah, and, and, and I, I get crazy around this. But as soon as I understand that, my aggression against you goes away yeah so and same when you then understand we are your space maybe the space go more know nicely thyself. away know thyself you'll know it all yeah. know thyself to know self to understand the self and not to blame others mm. this will be crazy because uh, i think nine out of ten times i feel emotions in a bad way bad way for another per human it's when you say something i could said myself inside in myself i don't dislike 
and you say it and then it get really emotional you know yeah that's crazy you know so often when i can see somebody say something or behave in a certain way yeah i know i have that side in myself too and i try to uh, suppress it sure. and uh, you show that side or then oh i have to really show aggression around it's the mirroring mirroring or yeah. the projection yeah it's even crazier to think that when you experience that feeling of trigger from another person, it is even crazier to think that it is necessary for you so that you can learn that it is a trigger for you, that it is your, your projection r- radiating <coughs> outside of you for that experience to happen. In that way, we are responsible for everything we live. We, we, we call forth in a way for our development. Because how do we understand this life without understanding these things about ourselves? But how do we understand if people don't trigger them? Yeah. We are not isolated beings, so our relationships will always meant to do that. They are meant to do that. Mm. That's one one way of seeing a relationship, and another way of to see I'm just a victim, and people just put you know push my buttons. Mm. Okay, we, c- we can continue with that and to create per further negativity for ourselves and others, or we can consider it, this is for my development. You know, there is something in there that I haven't dealt with. And whether you do it yourself or you go to a psychologist is your choice. Whether you do yoga, it is your choice. Whether you find other ways to do that is your choice. But I think it's important. Otherwise, it's a very conflicting world. It's a very me against the world. For sure. And I don't think that's a healthy place over time to be in. It's, it's very easy today and feel the world or uh, the community or uh, the government is against me, you know, and you get that feeling. Mm-hmm. Then you're really going to get it, you know. So, so I think <laughs> if I'm a victim, that's because I'm choosing to be a victim. It's you actually creating your life, really. It's there's no uh, intrusion there. You create your reality by your perception of what is happening, and if we can purify that perception, not based on our upbringing or our traumas or our language or our education, if we can purify that to a place of neutrality, <coughs> the middle path, neither good or bad, neither right or wrong, mm. in the middle, can we see things as they are? That is the hardest. Mm. Seeing reality as it is, is hard. Because we will always put on our own projections into it. Again, going back to Buddha, Buddha wanted to break free from those projections and to see reality as it is. It's... It's a thing now, we we always have to work on our troubles, we're going to go therapy, we're going to... thing you experience traumas whatever you know but I'm <coughs> lately I'm thinking that okay I have <laughs> many sides with me uh, I don't agree with it could be a lot better but in one way I feel a little bit more peaceful because I think okay that's the way I are that's the way I handle things that's the way I do and just respect that that's it. Acceptance of yeah. each thing. Yeah, well, except sure. I'm, I'm, I'm not like yeah. my neighbor. I say stupid things. Okay, mm-hmm. I can try to uh, yeah. ground it down a little bit, but I also have to accept I have those weakness. In order to change, we must accept first yeah. of our. If you want to change those things, you know, I think ex- acceptance opens up the way for change. Yeah. Can we change something we don't accept? No. Mm. But again, that self-reflection needs you know, some time and space for you to be able to say that I am different than my neighbor. It takes a lot of personal time to come to that conclusion. So time with the self, investigating our behaviors into the world, these are necessary things. We can't always learn about ourselves in the light of others. We can sometimes sit down and look at our own aspects and <coughs> know thyself. Hmm. And that is really the purpose of yoga practice. Because when you are doing the positions synced with, you know, with your breathing, 
one breath per moment, one breath per moment. You learn patience. And being with yourself at that level, with your body and breath, does something to you in seeing your patterns, in seeing the inner talk. What is going through the mind when you are doing these positions? You won't believe how much conversation is there. And, and most of them are actually judgments. <laughs> oh, I'm so good at this. Here, here is a judgment. I'm so good at this. Oh, I'm so bad at this. Here is another judgment. So we understand most of our inner conversation is based on judgment. The yoga mat, with us, o you know, on the yoga mat, we start to see these never-ending conversations. Because more we try to discipline the mind, more it reacts, more it resists, and it comes up with all the reasonable excuses not to do so. So we start to hear, there's so much voice in the head that is not always articulated into words. There's so much voice in the head. For sure. And that voice is most of the time against us. And that is 100%. called ego, yeah. you know? How do we break free, free from ego is negative talk. What practices are there to support us? And yoga is one of them. Hmm. And therapy is another way. Dance is another way. Being in the nature is another way. Whatever brings us closer to ourselves a little more, I think is very valid for everyone. Yeah, I heard stories about um, friends I know are hunters, yeah? And uh, <coughs> if you're going to walk up on an animal or sneak up on an animal and you're going to make some food, but for them, it's close to meditation because it's only them walking, silent, think of nothing think about your breathing sneaking up you know just and just like just, just you're in that space you don't think about your kids you don't think about school no work you're hundred like percent focus knitting is another one yeah that's the reason painting is another one yeah. music is another one where we are drinking able to <laughs> drinking is another one but then we see the overturn complications of yeah. that so hopefully like we drinking. choose things <laughs> I, I would like to stop it <laughs> Hopefully we choose things that are not over time going to be harmful, but of course that, that's also the reality. And um, we all want to escape from suffering at some in some aspect, don't we? we yeah, for me, for me, drinking or alcohol is uh, because your mind always works. You know, it's not uh, that easy to stop it, and and, uh, and yeah. it's grinding on all the time. And if you get a couple of drinks or a beer, you stop it. It in, in a way, you know, the waves. Yeah, <laughs> reduce is more correct. It's don't stop it, but reduce, yeah. Well, it but numbs. <laughs> it numbs, yeah. But the day after, yeah. it's worse. Yeah. Because then you have to deal with the aftermath and you haven't yeah. made any solution. And it's not just a hangover, but what you suppressed also comes up again. Yeah. And most often stronger. Shame. Stronger. Hmm. The voice is stronger over time if hmm. we keep suppressing it. Um... I hear you, yeah, yeah. But not that I'm going to call myself a normal human, but uh, but guys like me, or, or what's a nat natural step to do if you're going to go into yoga? And 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 I I'm seeking to make a change, and try to find my balance. And I believe it's not many people I know who have that good balance. You know. Uh, not too less, not too much. Uh, that's to begin yoga again in our modern world. <coughs> you can just find a lot of videos that you, you know you can start at home. However, it is recommended that you go to a local studio and you and you find a teacher. Yeah. As everything, there's a lot of saturated information on the media about what yoga is and some of the yoga teachings. If you have found a teacher in your city that has that has practiced it over a long time mm. and that yoga still happens to be their daily practice somehow whether it's self-reflection whether that is breathing exercise that instructor is still very much into their own practice and development if you find a teacher like that you go for it yeah. um, but teacher is only there to guide. It's not there to deliver what, what you're asking for. So that still depends on your own self-effort. 
So to join a course, for example, and to really dedicate your, you know, your time and effort on that day and time, on that week and time and day, that self-discipline is going to be the first step uh, to register for a session and to be there yeah. and to go through that. I failed this summer. So all, yeah. I failed this summer. I almost okay. did it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So that takes you see a certain <coughs> step to be able to you know sort of commit yourself to something. That's the first step, and the second, of course, is a good teacher, and the third thing is definitely to be patient with yourself. Most people come to yoga because they are inflexible and they are stiff. That's one aspect as we talk that yoga can offer some benefits upon. Uh, but your your fir- your very first class, you must be compassionate towards yourself and not to expect over too much from yourself. Yoga is not a physical exercise. I must stress that. I have always stressed that. Yoga is not a physical exercise only. It, it can benefit you in that way. But to narrow down yoga to that and to do one position and to say, I am a yogi, that level of ignorance is um, obviously not yoga. To be patient and to be curious and to be willing to learn something new and to take what you need from it. You don't have to accept everything, but you can take what serves little by little, little little changes we make in our lives. First we start with the positions, then we understand the significance of the breathing and we start to breathe not just on the yoga mat, but when we are stressed at work, that exhalation that we can offer, which we learn from yoga, that letting go, Mm. we start to take it into the world, you know, from the yoga mat into the real world. That's uh, one example. We understand that food is our only source of energy and what we put in our body is going to impact everything. Another teaching of yoga. Slowly, slowly we make life changes. We don't just jump and, you know, sort of do it all. That will only imbalance the system. We take time. That we take commitment for a certain period at least to see whether it works or not. And... um, it must work for it to continue. So the person will need to observe whether that change is coming. Mm. I can't force that onto people. They can decide, yeah, okay, that meditation that night, that, you know, yoga session I did, my physical exercise, that made me feel very good next day. There must be something in there for me. Self-exploration instead of jumping in it and expecting so much from yourself and from the method itself slowly slowly hmm. and that's the problem we can't learn it all on one day with us people we S- want results result based absolutely straight away we cannot wait you know that, that, that that's a that's five a steps to being happy yeah. six steps to being super yeah, fit yeah, we want yeah, yeah. you know give Two me the weeks, medicine yeah. i'll just fix it <laughs> yeah yeah it's that's crazy. No, things like yoga doesn't work that way. Nothing good in life really works in that life I- in that way. If it's gonna long term benefits, nothing works that way. The American says there's no such thing as a free lunch. <laughs> we must show some effort. Yes. We really must, uh, and <coughs> some commitment at least for a time to see that we have tried it. And that's true for everything, isn't it? Mm. It's. Um, I think. Mental discipline is another aspect of yoga. And to come onto the mat at a certain time every week takes a lot of discipline. Mm. To have a home practice takes a lot of discipline. Sure. Uh, being with yourself for an hour every day, looking at what is going on, not everybody wants to face that. But that mental discipline can be developed. To decide who is the boss. Is it the mind or you? Mm. Yeah. I always say when people are, oh, I feel like this, I feel like that, and so don't forget the feeling is yours. You yes can actually, is. you can actually change that feeling. So I think a lot of time we are feeling stuff we really don't need to feel. We can change it. We can do something about it. Mm. But I, I think everybody wants to change, but nobody wants to do the work for change. You see? Yeah, that's that's the thing. But I think the principle of yoga, it's uh, <coughs> even if you don't want to go all the way, but I think 
at least uh, at least look into it and get the basis is something you should actually teach the kids at the school okay. it, it, it's it's primary it's more important than reading mm. because reading is one thing but I understand reading is knowledge but but if you don't know how your mind works mm-hmm. you're in big trouble uh, if this can support your idea I have been working with the young athletes of one top direct mm, nice. school We've started four seasons ago, four uh, academic year ago, and we do it every year and every week. More tea if you want. Uh, thank you. I uh, More coffee. Maybe coffee, actually. A little bit. I'm going to hype you up. <laughs> Lots of questions coming through. The, um, their mentality as a school who train national athletes to be is that they those students are under a lot of pressure under a lot of stress, sure. under a lot of competitive stress. And most of them do their sports very well without the breath awareness. So <coughs> this was the reason that school wanted to do it and they really set an example across the nation for that. Um, we then understood that allowing students to breathe fully and freely also helped with their mental states as young kids or who are teenagers, they go through a lot of changes. And how this breath can help, you know, how can the breath help? That's been a very impressive approach to that school, I must say. And students feedback very well that they can relax, that they can, for the first time, hear their breaths. The funny story there is um, smoking. <coughs> many people in Norway smoked before, and many people have stopped it. I'm 50-50. But the fun part is the first drag you do from a cigarette and you feel, oh, I feel relaxed, you know. But if you think about it, it's the first time you actually filled up your lungs with anything because you're breathing all day on the top of the lung and you go outside. And There's something about breath and a release, isn't there? And There's you blow out yeah. and you get that happy feeling. But I don't think it's uh, the poison in the cigarette you make it. It's, it's that patterning, it's, it's that... This is the first yeah. time I'm yeah. stressing all day yeah. and I'm lightening up a cig. And Says the ex-smoker myself. And yeah. I'm blowing out everything yeah. and you feel calm. Yeah. But if I'm walking out now, we're sitting here talking and I'm walking out on the stair and I don't light the cigarette and I do... And you do that, it's different. Yeah, I it's prob- like I, I'm probably going to have the same sure. feeling, sensation. I relax, you know, but I fucking put yeah. that cigarette in my finger as well, you yeah. know. That's stupid, yeah. But the feeling I want, I'm going out. I'm sitting inside in front of the computer for two, three hours, going out, fresh air, yeah. inhaling and exhaling. Inhaling and exhaling. Wasn't there a research about people who smoke within the work environment get more breaks and more fresh air Perfect. than the ones who sit on the table? That's crazy, huh? Yeah. yeah. We don't actually take Keep on smoking, guys. <laughs> <laughs> or just go out for fresh air yeah. like the others do. Um, I think for us guys, <coughs> I'm not a woman, so I don't know how you feel. Um, and that, that that's a funny topic anyway, because when you, um, when you have a podcast, uh, my job is to try to understand what you are uh, saying and uh, ask questions around that. And I find it a lot harder to do that with ladies compared to boys. It's more easy to me to understand feelings when boys talk about when I talk to ladies. Okay. I'm a little bit fish taken out of a barrel. <laughs> but uh, I think many boys feel the thing we don't like with ourselves, it's we have demons inside ourselves. And sometimes we need to <laughs> I, I don't uh, find a word for it but sometimes when we do stupid stuff sometimes I just feel it's all the demons all, all the um, information everything stored inside your body and it uh, need to come out in some way you know and that's the reason we guys do a lot of stupid stuff yeah. do you think yoga can help to um, fighting with the inner demons 
Yeah, because yeah, we all it. all have inner demons. We do. Women do too. Um, but generally, you ladies or women are more nice than us guys. You know, we guys are we are more violent. We are. The researches show that women in general are more tending to work with their emotions, understand themselves a little deeper by nature. Sure. Uh, women have that, and majority of my, you know, yoga community are female. Although we have male practitioners too, there the, there seems to be something there about female seeking development, understand their emotions, deep rooted feelings and thoughts. But I hope I'm not generalizing when I say that. Oh it's yeah, go um, on. But the research has shown I'm that for, for yoga, that. for yeah. example, has been very popular for the female community. Yeah. Um, this 5,000 year old science of life has influenced many women but yeah, and men it, it too. Because you're, you're, uh, I think uh, you're a lot better than us men to, to express your feelings. Uh, that's one thing. And another thing I think for me to come in your studio with a room full of ladies and I'm bending and I don't, yeah. I don't think I'm comfortable with it. Then I would surprise you with the strength element of the workshop <laughs> or the or the classes. There's strength going on there. Yeah, but strength. call it masculine. Yeah, if that's yeah but no, no, no. I don't care about the strength. I think, but uh, but uh, just me lying in a t-shirt or a tights or whatever and bending around. It's not. It's not for me. Mm-hmm. Have you tried? No. Okay. Perhaps <laughs> give, you know, give it a try. <laughs> yeah. To be honest, uh, I totally hear what you say over the years. I had this feedback from men. But that deep relaxation that we experience at the end is something that you would not want to miss. Hmm. Yeah, for sure, for sure. But I think just. And that relaxation doesn't <coughs> happen without the postures and the bending and the stretching. Hmm. We, you know, we don't just sort of feel that way when we arrive there. It needs some work to get there. Hmm. So those positions, after a while, you would see. I need to do them in order to feel this way. Hmm. So it becomes a bit more natural, natural I guess. Yeah. And there's nothing unnatural about the shapes we do. Yes, there is some bending, but I mentioned the word strength specifically because yoga is just flexibility, what you know most people think. Hmm. But how can you stretch something when the muscle is not strong? It will end up in injury. Uh, and I know uh, it's not yoga, but uh, I used to uh, train a lot of strength before and was, yeah. was um, strong. And uh, it's not yoga, but something stretching and yeah. in w- one gym. And me and some guys, we did it just to get a little bit more flexible. Because if you train train a lot with the weights, you yeah. get uh, generally not that flexible. Yeah. But it was very hard. Because when I have a body like 110 kilo, and you understand, it, 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 I was pouring sweat, you know. But then I went there with like four or five other guys. And we was like a group. So then it was not that laughable, you know, because then we can make a little bit. It, it's mm-hmm, broken mm-hmm. up a little bit, you know. But if uh, if you put me between ten girls and I'm gonna stand in compromising positions, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, I will be, wouldn't feel comfortable. Sure. And that would indicate self-awareness at sure. that moment. But as we transition in this practice, as we get better, as we develop in this practice, we don't really see what is around us. Mm. Embarrassment is a word I'm looking for. Embarrassment. Yeah, Yeah, I can can understand that as a male. But you would notice that the female around you don't even see you. No, no. They're They're like, they're there in their own world. Mm. I certainly have a mixture in my classes, and perhaps they felt that way in the beginning, but um, it seems people are really into their own work. So I'd strongly recommend just give it a chance and see if that's still your experience, or is it some You should start a, you should uh, have like a project with the all male class, with the plumbers and the car mechanics and just. <laughs> Uh, Although you know, pumped up weightlifters. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, but yeah. I think yeah, that would I think that would be a good uh, success to have, have have like a special class for the guys. Yeah, I have worked with the footballers of uh, Hamcom, you know. Yeah. So, um, and I have seen very very able footballers who can do yoga. Very able masculine men who. Um, have really developed in yoga. I have seen a lot of that. 
in fact yoga is a masculine practice i must sure. say it's uh it, it, it's it's about sharpening the focus and the concentration concentration and focus are masculine qualities and i hope that we understand what masculine and female energy is mm. rather than i put it as woman and man yeah, yeah. in each of us we <coughs> have a female and a male psyche uh, so there's a man in me and there's a woman in you sure so the female and the male can be united in harmony which takes us back to yoga what yoga is um, we are both we are both aspects uh, but yoga focuses on the masculine principles that are concentration yeah. that are mm, concentration focus one-pointed focus which happens to be a male quality masculine quality in its energetic you know sort of term the female quality is more about movement and creation nurturing mm -hmm. <coughs> but yoga in itself is a masculine practice because it's about mental discipline and mental discipline focus is represented by the masculine energy with no offense in any yeah, way yeah, of yeah. sex well, gender it is not about no, that no, no. but as an energy yeah yeah and uh, <laughs> if you go a couple of step back buddha as far as i know he was a male mm -hmm. he started it all mm -hmm. and now it's been like a, a female uh, movement. Sure. And that's a bit strange in one way. But at the same way, you can see like Rogan guys, people, people are investing a lot of time in this. They and uh, and, I for sh uh, and that's, for me, that's... Science is starting end, to show. Yeah, High-end people in, in the brain scale, the, the, the people are achieving a lot in their life. And they're doing whatever they need to do mm -hmm. to get at that level they want to go. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I can see your guys. Sure. Even the mix, mixed martial arts. Mm -hmm. uh, mm. I can't remember his name. The British guy who won the game a few years back. In boxing or MMA? MMA. Oh, uh, 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 McGregor. Yeah, McGregor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He worked with a you know, <coughs> yoga teacher before he won that competition. Yeah. He surprised everyone yeah. with his way of holding himself. Yeah. Not always attacking, but to know that holding space, which mm. he says that yoga has done a lot for him. Yoga plus uh, functional movements, which he never tried before that game. But after studying meditation and self-composure, self-listening and calming himself a little, uh, he has won that game. Yeah. So. And scientists such as um, Andrew Huberman, I don't know if you watch his podcast, no, he's no. lovely, he's a neuroscientist and he really recommends yoga as a way of life for maintaining our nervous system in, you know, sort of balance. You see the breath is the source of nervous system. The way we breathe is going to show everything about our mental state. If I'm breathing fast, that means I have a lot of thinking going mm. or fear or shock or something to stop. But if I'm inhaling and exhaling in comfort and in freedom, it, sh it shows I have a peace of mind. Hmm. So pace of the breath can show a lot to us about the state of that person's, you know, mental health hmm. or the lack of it, lack of the breath work can really cause significant diseases if you're not receiving oxygen that we need the most. Did you know that most people, when they take the inhalation, they take it only as far as a little below the shoulders mm. so the breath comes in and it goes through the throat <coughs> it settles somewhere around the upper body not below the heart but right above the heart so wha what happens to the rest of the body then what happens to the you know the stomach area where all the organs are seeking that oxygen so to learn to deeply breathe is the biggest benefit we can receive from yoga actually yeah. maybe that's what we start with Maybe that's what should be taught at schools. Maybe that's what should be taught in therapies, which I know they do. I know most therapists are now using the you know, breathing exercises as a mm. way of normalizing the nervous system. And, and if, if people are panicking or whatever, in, in probably hundreds a year, take a beef, deep breath. Mm. You know, calm down. Take a deep breath. You know, that, that's take a deep breath, yeah. and it really makes a difference. 
and in, in <coughs> pregnancy as well. I have worked with some pregnant ladies. And after they've given birth, which was a smooth birth, apparently the you know, doctors are saying, when did you learn to breathe like this? This is what saved you today. Th what, mm. what is it this you have learned? And so I, I get calls on the way to the uh, hospital, you know, <laughs> Mary Jane, breathing uh, the way you're showing us, breathe. Uh. They hear the voice, breathe, they hear the voice. You work with a lot of people and um, who are aware of the body and the mental state and our soul, but we haven't been in quite special uh, time in our life now, the last couple of years, yeah. and and that's fair, and uh, let's just call call it for what it is. If you look at uh, the television or the newspaper can just call it fair factory it's fear uh, factory mm. straight on fair mm. factory mm -hmm. and uh, and now yeah. now we're, we're taking the mask off and we start living again and then fucking putin start you know so we we walk from one fair to another that's fair stuff. and and that's gonna mm -hmm. kill people people that's not a good place to live in if you constant every time you open a telephone every I stopped you. Okay, now the last couple of days I've been uh, browsing the news because I'm curious about what's going to happen in Ukraine. But or else I just block it. I don't. I don't use the television. I don't use. I don't look at the newspaper. I haven't watched television for many years. Oh, good on you. Mm. It's fair. Fair I factory. If there is something I want to learn, I do my own research. I can always find those news from different parts of the world, but I don't watch the news to dictate my my understanding of that situation. Ah. I, sh I should <coughs> look into it from different sources. That's been my... Yeah, and, and I think it's, it's a correct... If you're going to learn something new, it's, uh, it's because you want to learn something about it, not because... It's not given to me, but no. I search for it. So yeah, sure. and then that's that's sure. two different things, but but how how do you think fair um, function our body now these days? Because the young people, the old people, the middle people, because I don't believe we can pressure everybody with that amount of fair, yeah. and we don't need we don't even have to discuss. Yeah. the virus or nothing mm -hmm. we can just leave it alone and say okay we, the future i'm going to tell off the truth about it anyway mm -hmm. everything comes to the first surface but but two three years now yeah with fair 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 you cannot even listen the radio in the car yeah. you know even even uh, when this magnus calls he's playing chess mm. they made that to, uh, like a virus oh they have someone testing post yeah. you cannot yeah. enjoy nothing yeah. And 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 I can see people are turning against each other because you mean that I mean that, and then we're mortal enemies. Yeah. And uh, we're, we're splitting. Yeah. And like uh, everything in life, fear has a purpose. Fear has a purpose. <coughs> we we cannot eliminate fear from life. Fear protects us in many ways. If yes. it wasn't for the fear, I would just jump off the window now. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't be afraid. You know. So fear helps us to survive, and that's its biggest function, really. And it, and it should be there. It should be there. Uh, but as in everything, the how much fear are we allowing? <laughs> Again, it's the balance of of to trust versus fear, or to be comfortable with fear versus panic in in fear. Yeah, and and. It's and and uh, and if you giving me fair, I, I think as I talk earlier, I'm I'm a simple guy. If it's something I'm gonna be fair of, I'm gonna feel it. Mm -hmm. When mm -hmm. I heard this happen, mm -hmm. I didn't feel it. Yeah, I didn't feel it at all. My mom was plus sixty. She she did. she did she didn't feel it. Sure. You say okay, say what you want, do what you want. Sure. I'm not scared. If I die now, I die now. I live my life. I don't feel it inside me, mm -hmm. so for me, I, I didn't really care. But, but in the news is hammering me, and people have meanings, and 
so 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 I, I I get it in into my soul anyway. But inside my stomach, I'm not scared of it. But if me and me walking on the edge of the roof, sure. I can feel it. Yeah, yeah. And I can walk in 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 an alley in Oslo, yeah. and I can feel it. Or I can walk in an alley in Oslo, I don't feel it. And normally, that actually is correct for me. But in one way, I, I have to accept if fair factory decide now you're going to be fair mm -hmm. scared mm -hmm. i have mm -hmm. to be it and mm -hmm. I, i'm thinking to be crazy because too many of us is letting that fear in yeah yeah we certainly have seen a lot of implications of the recent fear uh, of the virus and of people around us even the families the family members if one disagrees they have different views on it break up christmas part and everything there is no doubt yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's fucked up. There is no doubt that exposure to fear over time without being controlling of, of it, yeah. without knowing the balance of it, exposure to fear over time is very dangerous to our well being. Sure. It creates diseases, it creates cancer. Sure. It creates everything that we don't want physiologically. Yeah. So say we've been exposed to this for three years now, two years, something three else, years. Something like this. Something happened in our immune system as a result. It weakens the immune system. 100%. 100%. Yeah. Scientific results. Yeah, and, and that, that's, not, that's not a mumbo jumbo. This, this is actually hardcore science people. Hardcore yeah. science. They, they have proven you can think Fear yourself reduces. sick. Yeah. You can think in a certain way and you're yeah. going to get sick of it. Yeah. And and then people say, oh, if you can think yourself to get sick, maybe you can think yourself to get not sick then. Sure. Both is possible. But you may not be thinking of yourself in direction of fear. But if the world if the world you live in and the media constantly gives you that injection, mm. it's not even up to you anymore. You just fed into that in your daily life every day, you which has been what's, what's going on every day for us, the stats on the virus and the statistics. I cannot even every use my day. radio in my car. Every day. I have to show, I, I turn off the sound mm -hmm. because I know yeah. I'm going to, from mm -hmm. Brimendal to Hamar, I'm going to get two or three messages That's about true. what happened. In, in your sex message. The other day I got a message saying by downloading this app, <laughs> you, 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 you can see the well, the person on the street who walks next to you, whether they have virus or not. Oh, fuck that. That scared me. Yeah. That was like, I know, I can't live like that. I can't. And it's not being ir irresponsible for my health, but I can't live mentally like that. It's a uh, fear-based <coughs> and doubt-based and suspicion-based state, which is not a natural state for human. Human's natural state is actually love and peace. And of course we have fear on top of that too. It's about the medium between. We will only see the implications of this fear injection over the three years in the years to come, mm. what it did to us. Mm. And it's serious. Yeah, because I I if, if I suspect you to be a mean person, then I'm going gonna, gonna to bend every word you say to something bad, you know? Yeah. I, if if yeah, I go sure. if I gonna use my telephone to see if if the neighbor have this and have us, mm. I gonna look for it. If you are gonna look enough, yeah, sooner or later you're gonna find it, even if it's true or not. For sure. I don't deny the fact that uh, so some of that fear is there to protect us and to be careful and to be cautious. I I don't deny that fact, but the measure of it is important. How much fear? Yeah, and, and, and listen to your stomach. Listen to your stomach. And, uh, and also, you know, if anything, keep your immune system healthy. There is yeah, nothing yeah. to be afraid of. <coughs> keep your immune system but strong. I'm, I'm a lucky. I'm, I have traveled a lot in my life, and I've been in situation where could be sick people, whatever. Some, and every time, my stomach is twisting. Ah, August, couple of steak back. Keep, no, don't eat food there. You know, mm -hmm. something, something, here mm -hmm. something is wrong, yeah. It put me off. But now, when my stomach say, don't let this uh, dictate my life, don't go, don't walk around, be fear, fearful in August, then I'm like a crazy person because I don't listen to Fair Factory. I think that, that this is, uh, this is not the way to go. 
we can't stay healthy by keeping away from people. We can't we can't continue our human life like that but we we can continue in a, in a good way if we look after this body if we look after our mental health uh, then we can rise above fear but say that to someone who don't lead a healthy life and they already circle in the negative patterns bring fear onto them mm. it's extra it's extra hard mm. so even under the influence of fear People have the choice to work towards their well-being by using effort mm. and not giving as a prescription. Mm. We are responsible, you know, for our health um, and protecting ourselves in that way of extreme protection doesn't doesn't really guarantee uh, health. It's <coughs> we we have to face our own needs. The thing is, if if if, if um having the vaccine doesn't protect, if if you if you are continuously leading an unhealthy life, how is that going to protect? You're, you're going to get cancer. System? You're going to heart attack. You know, it's it's. Uh, and I think people understand that actually, August. People do, especially since the corona. I had more of a breath awareness from my community and new people wanting to understand that because the virus comes from the breath mm-hmm, limitation, mm-hmm. and it was just perfect in that way for what yoga could could give uh the lungs related but say when you when you bring up kids if if i'm going to prepare for everything and not allow them to experiment anything himself I, I, i'm going to build like a garden uh buddha had around him yeah. they're going to die on the street it's not real is it? the world is not a happy place people no. you know no. they have to learn if you cut yourself in the finger with a knife you're going to bleed and you're going to pain then then maybe not run with the knife and fall on it later, you know. Yeah. So sooner yeah. or later, we we cannot we cannot build barricades around all the Norwegian people, the world, or whatever, you know. I think it's quite beautiful what's happening in Canada now. Mm-hmm. I think Canada is going to be one of the most strongest country in the world after because their people are f- actually standing shoulder to shoulder, they and they're fighting, and they show the spirit of Canada. Who, what is Canadian standing for? Not what politicians standing for, and rules and government. They are standing up for each other. And as we've seen in the history before, the harder the government push, the harder and more people are coming. You know. It so Canada, the the government in Canada, they lost already because they they're beaten down old ladies and everything. And it, it it's crazy what's happening over there. Canada uh, has always impressed me anyway in in that way. Yeah. Mm. That's that's a community. Yeah. The people taking care. Yeah. And said we didn't fight for Canada, for this bullshit guy going to dictate me. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's crazy times. It is fair. We we have to fight this fair. You know, it's. Uh, I I don't want to have it. No, and it's in our nature to escape from fear anyway. It's in our nature to move towards better feelings than fear. Mm. It is in us. We are, you know, programmed for that. Animals live in fear. Mm. It's that level of consciousness. Mm. But humans are not like that. But the problem is Even less. Even the animals actually can let go a little, you know, when yeah, you yeah. when you offer them love. It's yeah. Uh, yeah. it's in all of our nature. But less people do yoga, or uh, if if not yoga, in a different way, keep in co- touch with themselves. And try to have a normally balance inside. It's you more out of balance, or more you are out of touch with yourself. You're less gonna listen to your stomach. Absolutely. So I think mm. the stomach feeling. Don't mm. forget it, it. Intuition, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How how long have you been on this planet? You know. When 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 was some uh, pharmaceutical doctors mm. the solution? We fight us years ago. Buddha walk around, and we have many years. But now in 2020, oh no, 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 no! If you don't follow this, everything goes mm. straight to hell. Mm. And the fact that we would never have imagined saying yes to any of this if they told us five years ago, oh. we would never exe- no. ex- ex- uh, accepted that. But the fear of death is our biggest fear. You see, sure. there are many <coughs> fears, but the death is our biggest fear. And of course, we want to save this precious life but that, why that are we, we are given. Why are we so scared of death? Uh, because we associate with body a lot. 
Yeah. We don't always say we are more than body that is not born or it never dies. Th- that you know aspect that I was talking about, that very peaceful and joyful and forever living aspect of us. We don't associate ourselves with that so much. We associate with what we see, what we feel and touch. That is the physical body. Mm. And what happens to physical body when it dies? It just goes under earth. Yeah. Obviously, that's the end, according to us. But <coughs> in, if you're talking about energy, energy never dies. It actually transforms, but it never dies. Mm. So does that mean that perhaps our lives are transitionary into other en- other forms and energies? That's another question yoga has in mind, the reincarnation, etc. But it's life as a continuum. And we're just some of the players in that huge field of beings and um that that is one other thing i have problem with the different gods is uh, because we are so fair scared of dying scared of the end it's easy to believe so sometimes i envy you if you believe firmly in god and you're going up in heaven up in the sky and having a nice time <coughs> i envy the people <coughs> because they, they have they have like an end story. I don't have. I know I'm going to shovel down. So only thing scares me about death is if I die a little bit too soon, and I couldn't be there for my girls and help them in their life. But I know they are good girls, so they're going to do it anyway. But that that I think is the fear I have around that. It's just because uh, I grown up with uh, my dad uh, died when I was quite young mm-hmm. and I know it's, it could be a struggle and uh, and grow up and everybody like to have a dad uh, so I don't like to give them that pain yes. I would rather rather they didn't experiment with that but I don't know I, I'm just stardust I'm nothing in this mm-hmm. world you know I, I'm one of many billion people I'm nothing the world don't need me so and I have a nice life, so if I go, I go. And we have to just sort it out. And if I don't feel anything, okay, that's that's not a problem. We will only see when we die, right? Yeah. We'll only get to see that. But I don't want to spend my life being scared mm. to die. And in that way, I am you, the people who think in reincarnation or have a god or get ten virgins. Uh, it's an easy way out, I feel. It's an e- easy way out for a heavy question. And uh, I think it's rather it's a better... It's heavy question. I think the concept of death is heavy. It's rather uh, better to 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 uh, try to do the correct thing in your life so at least that life I have now is not going to be a hell for me. I have to do some smart things so I can have, have a proper life and enjoy the life I have. But I, I feel many people are doing so much in this life to achieve something in something we really don't know. So they forget to live now mm-hmm. and sit with prayers or whatever. But uh, but I understand that if you if you spend one hour with yoga, that's something you invest in yourself and you're actually going to use it that day and the day after. So then you can create a heaven of a life. Sure. And and that I can respect. People who are actually investing in themselves in this life now in 2022, I respect that very much. But I cannot respect if you're investing in something I don't know. One of the hardest things for that we come here with in our programming is our ability to project into the future and our reflection into the past. The human mind is able to do both. We can live the same experience two times in our lives. One in the past, mm-hmm. it, you know, as we look back at, uh, you know, as the past, and when it is the past happening. this life, yeah, not yeah. not not a this life, yeah, this, this life. life, okay, yeah. So I can look back at this special memory I have yesterday, today, and I can relive it, and I have also lived it while it was happening. So everything o- almost can be lived twice in this life. Okay, yeah. One through projection or a reflection. Human mind is not comfortable, and and you know this is a fact. Human mind is not comfortable being in the now. No. We are more at ease with either looking back at the past, so we can learn from it, or that we can project into the future. But to be here right now, that is the hardest. Sure. 
art. It's it's so hard. I don't know many people who can do that, because our thought patterns always there to take us away from now, either into the past or the future, or whatever we make out of it. But what happens now is the only guarantee to the future. If we do the right things today, we don't have to worry about the future. What benefit <coughs> is it to look back if I'm today here? So these are the two that we know as a fact. But okay, it's yeah. hard to apply. Yeah. It's so hard to apply. In that way, when you're on the yoga mat, alone with your breath and your bodily sensations, you are in the now. But even then we project hmm. as judgment. Am I good? Am I not? Is this painful? Is this pleasure? It's it's always that's really hard not to do that judgment. It's really hard. Yes, and uh, not many people really can, can, can achieve that. It's not easy. Uh, but to work towards that can help us um, be more aware. Yeah. As I talk about now, it becomes a past, you see. Yeah. It's just a very flowing, transitionary, impermanent aspect of life. Nothing stays the same. Everything keeps changing, including you. Hmm. I'm not the same person I sat here an, you know, one hour ago. No. That's crazy. Physiologically as yeah. well. Yeah. I yeah. am changing. My cells are dying every day. Yeah. I am you know, becoming later in my, you know, later stages in my life. And, but to not accept that and to always project towards future is another sign of fear of death. Mm. It will end too. To not accept death is to, is to deny the fact of life. And sure. how can we win that battle? Never. Yeah. So it's maybe best to... That's the reason I think God is just denying your life now. For me, it's, it's a big hose. It's, uh, I, for me, it's just uh, a very smart man or a lady or whatever. For a couple of thousand years ago, we have to reunite uh, our country. We need to get these people to behave mm -hmm. so we can build up what we want to build out. Let's put some fear out there mm -hmm. and then give a solution. Yeah. You know, okay, you're going to burn in hell. He's always going to look at you. Yeah. But if you do what we tell, oh my God, you're gonna have a heaven after, you know. So it's it's they they're just making, a, a, call it a virus, and 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 they give it, giving the cure on the other side. Mm -hmm. So if you do what I say, everything will be okay. I don't think God God ever exist at all, and in that way we lose our life now. Those beliefs are also changing now as we change in humanity, as our consciousness goes up uh, uh, a little higher level, we understand those teachings were relevant at, you know, at their time, perhaps necessary, mm. to keep the <coughs> rules going, to keep the society in the right way. Um, That's the reason related to... But there are countries who don't need that. For example, you know, Japan. I've, I was in Japan and the way people acted and behaved on a personal level or as a stranger, <laughs> it was almost they were living by the book, but it's a country that doesn't have a religion. So where is that self-control coming from? Human apparently has the ability to do that without the influence of rules and regulations. And they do, but yeah, they but that educate that's a lot. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's to make a proper good culture. Yeah. And, and I think the reason people don't mm -hmm. pray to God every day in Norway now is because we don't need that religion in the same way because we have police, we have cameras, we have surveillance. So if you d if you don't fall in line, we're going to take your money or we're going to give you a, a ticket or we're going to put you in jail. Yeah. But yeah. when we didn't have that system around, you're the priests are going to tell you you're going to burn in hell, my friend. You're absolutely right because in Japan there was a lot of uh, restriction based on penalty tickets so yeah. people really learned with that <laughs> mm. it's a form of it's a form of religion yeah yeah it's based Thanks. everything is based on fear yeah fear um so and, and one other thing i think it's um very nice with with a, with a podcast is when you can sit down and talk as we do now because then then the world stop a little bit around but in a normal day, people don't have time for it. They don't have the friends. They don't have uh, everybody. Okay, we're going. We, the kids going to play this. We're going to train this, and and you have to go to work, and you have to uh, 
answer some emails. Yeah. And uh, I think people need to sit down and com- talk, understand each other. And that's that's the reason podcasts have blown up as it done now. Same, uh, I, I love this uh, Joe Rogan, and I think. Of course, he's a, he's an extremely talent uh, in in the hosting the podcast, but then he he gets so much good stuff out of all the people who are visit him. So I learned something, even if I don't interesting me, uh, I have some interest for for I the one who talk. Yeah, I can just but yeah. just put on whatever. Sure. Yeah, and sure. he he has broadened my mind because if he only talk about one thing, then I then I search for that one thing. That's it. But when I go there, I can I can uh, hear about everything sure. between here and the moon, and uh, and uh, and the principles are the same. Mm-hmm. People are communicating, they're talking, they're understanding and learning something. It's good to shock the brain with new information we don't necessarily choose, it's but beautiful. to welcome that, and it's really good for the brain cells to develop and to create new cells. And you yeah, know, it's and, very and good for us. And when you have Joe Rogan, he he don't have. A whole crew behind, mm-hmm. who who are uh, want to push one special agenda. Yeah. He's open, yeah. but if you look to fair, funny enough, he he actually run Fair Factory mm-hmm. <laughs> from old one. But but if you look to Fair Factory now, you have like ten, one hundred. How many people went to school, learned a way to think, and they really want to put that on me. So every time I turn off the, on the radio, or whatever, they they gonna hit me with fair, 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 fair. There's also this idea that no matter how much they hit you with the fear, you as an individual can choose not to take that. Yeah. And that takes a lot of, again, self-knowing, self-understanding, and a lot of willing and curiosity to learn deeper of that subject, whether it is the case <coughs> or not. But as we go back to the same thing, we want solutions given to us in a very fast way. Mm-hmm. If I have news delivered to me, they have done their work and I can receive that information. But the same information is related or distributed in other parts of the world in a different way. Uh. So then which one is true? Then it is up to me as an individual to do my research mm. and see whether that's the case or not. The problem is with, with the self-knowledge is the system is we wake up at a certain time in the morning, drop off the kids at the school, we go to work, we get the salary. Uh, on Wednesday, we do Friday, taco freda. We, we have like a system. Yeah. And and we are quite comfortable, yeah. so we don't really don't need to to learn anything about yourself because from you wake up to you go to bed, you have a timeline, yeah. and you just have to hang on to to reach a time, and you don't you don't have any time more to sitting and dwelling or thinking about things. Yeah, and routines are a good thing. Is that what you're saying? The routines, however. <laughs> Again, according to the research, um, routines, if we get stuck in too much in them, they cause, again, diseases such as Alzheimer. Mm. We can't be living with structures and routines same every day. That is not what our brain is you know, sort of comfortable with. O- and over time, the implications of that is Alzheimer. It is good to have a structure. But to do the same again and again, again and again, to get by life and to call it a life, our brains won't take that, I think, for a long time. And it goes back to learn new things, surprise your neurons with new information to create electricity to go in. Otherwise, it becomes numb. Mm. Same with movement, actually. Every new movement we learn also impacts the neurons of our brain to develop new ones. Mm movement and learning is fantastic you know for our for our brain but to live the same is death to me that's real death to me that's real death to be stuck in that patterning no matter how good it is thousand cuts no matter how good it is Mm. no matter how good it is Mm. in china in china was a old torture method killed by thousand cuts small cuts you know, and yep. same as routines, you know, it, it kills your spirit. It offers you safety and, and security, for mm. sure. And I think people need that. 
with all the information we receive and all the all the jobs that we must deliver as a family member as a partner as a you know colleague we have so many roles so many tasks in order to get by efficiently in all of them routine can help but again if too much over a long period our body detests the idea mm. Some change, occasional change, occasional breaking of the cycles is good for us. Same thing with the food, for example. You could be eating healthy every day, but it is recommended you shock your system now and again with bad things such as sugar and this and that. So your body starts to learn to defend. (coughs) Same thing. Mm. So the patterns are to be watched for. Yeah. And um, (coughs) I have people... I walked up, to, uh, come and talk to me. Met them out in town or whatever. Normally, we guys are quite good to talk when we're a little bit drunk. So then the, the, the good good breaking. But sometimes, uh, oh, I understand. Don't understand how you dare to do. How can you just start those? And, and I always had a dream, and I didn't follow it, you know. And uh, and I ask, what is your dream, you know? And this is just one guy was working um, with a meat plant or something. I always dreamed to be a carpenter. And I said, okay, why didn't you follow that dream? You worked with this meat plant for 20 years now. No, you know, I get my first kid and we had a mortgage on the house. Mm-hmm. And I, so I, I didn't didn't dare, you know. I said, yeah, but if it didn't work out, you could just go back again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, yeah. So he worked with something in 20 years because he didn't dare to what he liked. He liked to build stuff. And that's sad. That's sad because his routine was so tight. So he couldn't take two, three, four months outside the routine. Yeah. I see that these days. A man actually built up a little carpentry studio in their home and they still like to get that passion out of themselves. And yeah. Maybe not for living, but if they want to, to work with wood, yeah. then they can still work with wood. Yeah. Uh, sometimes we have to compromise and sacrifice our dreams on the way to live in this life in yeah, the way but we want to. But if your dream are to build house, you should be okay, you know. I understand if your dream is to fly up to the moon, maybe you have to sacrifice that dream. But when the dream is to just work with your body and your hands and create stuff... Mm. That's craziness. Yeah. There's a lot of carpenters in this country. Yeah. I think most of them love it. Yeah. And that's okay. It's good. Sacrifices, I guess. I I also mean um, if you want to be a carpenter and you know that it may pay you less than working in a bank, then that's your choice. I mean, you're not going to not survive. Um, maybe you will live with less, maybe not the same standards. But some compromise at some point has to be done, you know. Money don't make you happy. Money don't make you happy until you understand that's the case. Yeah. Until you have it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. There is that, uh, I think, you need You need a certain amount of, uh, of money so you don't live in pain as well. But but uh, I think I, I think you reach a point. Yeah. It really doesn't matter anymore. Sure. Because you could sit in the most fancy restaurant and eat the most fancy fish. Yeah. And if you n- don't achieve the balance inside you, <coughs> it doesn't matter if you can buy that fish or sit in that restaurant. You are not happy inside anyway. I think we all understand that now. You think? I think yeah, I think so. You I think, think we understand it? In our, in our time and age, since we are more comfortable than ever, than our previous, you know, sort of generations. And we have experienced that pre-virus very well. Yeah. We, <coughs> have, we have tasted what it means to have no limitations to our desires. We, you know, we, we could afford, we could travel, we could access. Mm. So we have really lived those things. I think that was a good thing. And, uh, and I'm sure every, every person who's listening to this would relate to sitting on the most beautiful in a sort of restaurant table and feeling completely not satisfied. That emptiness inside that is never filled with a luxurious meal or a holiday. 
um, I think I think we all experienced that at some point. Mm. I think I'm not going to be uh, if I had to build my life so I walk on the red carpet and everything is beautiful, you know. It's not for me. I rather sit on stone, take a mm. cup of coffee, mm-hmm. and talk with you. It's that's that's. Uh, simple pleasures in life mm. but we're all different and I like diversity I like uh, the other end of the spectrum as well if people are finding that satisfying I'm totally okay with living my own life in the way I want and also supporting others to do the same I think at some point we will all come to an understanding that simplicity is the luxury uh, the last three years have taught us that in a way. We have lived with little, little, you know, flying around and jet setting and shopping and this and that. Uh, I understand even the shopping has decreased. Uh, Good. F- fashion shopping, things like that, yeah. because we don't go out. And with the metaverse coming, apparently, <laughs> mm. are you familiar with the, the metaverse? Mm. Uh, apparently, we don't even need to leave our homes anymore so no new clothes are needed and we work from home we live in the internet and things like that coming um i feel we are lucky in our generation to have experienced both yeah it's not every generation had their own issues but we have seen both worlds Mm -hmm. having all to having overnight being home locked which we have didn't expect it, but uh, and I think we're going to have a big change because uh, the youngsters we fucked up, our generation fucked up. I mean that from bottom of my heart. But when I talk to my daughters, and they using internet in a different way, so they don't get everything from Fair Factor. Hmm. Okay, you can have Enarco Super and stuff, mm. uh, trying to attack it also. Now I can see, and I go had like a um, a game for my youngest girl, mm-hmm. and that was to avoid the virus, mm. stuff like this. I said, "What the mm. fuck? Are, what are you doing?" Even in the cartoons and stuff. Yeah, in yeah. the play, yeah. and and uh, but sometimes when I ask those girls some question, they have some good answers, yeah. and I, I think they are more waking than us. So I I I don't think they're gonna take the bullshit from the fair factory in the same way because they have d- a different we had our information coming from one place and and uh, the people who created the information created uh, the movies everybody uh, went to the same school with the same teachers with the same teacher plan mm, mm. you know so it's already colored but nowadays me and you can make a youtube movie and put out and people can actually search and find. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's going to change change a lot. Because sometimes I just like a reference, if uh, if the government is saying something I experience I'm quite stupid, and I, I ask my kids, what do you think about this? And when they answer, it's so simple, it's so easy. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they say straight through it, no, oh, that's bullshit, you know? If if humanity is about progression, I think young people are naturally more progressive than we have been. They For are sure. born into a different world than we were, and their upbringing is definitely different than how it has been for us. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm only looking back forty years here, yeah. 1970s. Yeah. It's very different now. For sure. In many ways, I consider myself lucky to have lived in those times. I wasn't off school for a year because of virus. There was never things like that. I was able to play on the street. Mm. I had only chicken pox, uh, you know, vaccine, nothing else. I didn't wear masks. There was a real world out there. And for that reason, I am deeply uh, sort of concerned for our young generation, for certain things not to be experienced by them. I am deeply concerned. But each generation lives their own meant to be, I feel, and this is their challenge. If we are human enough, we can take this further into better places for us. Mm. 
it really is up to us. Nothing is too late. No. All this fear can even inspire us to do better if we allow it to. Sure. It just depends which angle are we looking at it from. And to keep positive. Yeah. There is good things coming. There is good things coming. But we also see the fact of life as it is today. Uh, we can't ignore that. We can't say things will go back to normal. There is no normal anymore. Those days are gone. Yeah. And to live in the illusion of those days is gone. So sooner we accept and sooner we adapt, sooner we develop new skills for survival, eliminating fear as best as we can, deciding individually that it is up to us to fear or not. Hmm. Fear cannot be induced upon us if we decide, we, you know, we can feel different, think different. I hope and I know we will. I think humanity is always strong enough to do that. But fear is an important element at the moment mm. for most aspects. Yeah. My mother says that uh, don't uh, with enough people starting to think positive, things gonna change because that's that's a force of nature. It's a very powerful energy. Yeah, mm-hmm. and we are the people. We are. Yeah, not the government. They can try to rule. They can do what they want, but. When all come to all, me and you are gonna wake up tomorrow morning, and uh, so we can we can ju- we, we can change. The government should be an offspring of us, mm-hmm. but because we have uh, nurtured people yet yeah, through school, through family, if a father was that and you were born there, so so we have like generation with government people who are just put there in in some way. I think that's going to change. Those times have fled. They, they, uh, they push it too far. In my experience, I'm not a Norwegian, and in my experience, <coughs> I've, um, I've lived in different countries, and here, how I felt from my communication with friends who are Norwegian, that the government, the state is seen as a father figure. I wonder if mm. you agree with that. Uh, uh, I understand they wo- they want to believe it, but I don't. I don't. That's not my father. Um, in the ad- other cultures I have lived, that wasn't certain in the case. There, there wasn't a sense of trust towards the government, mm. as I have seen it here. It, it exists. Mm. That was refreshing to me. Mm. Of course, there are things to improve. I'm sure, but uh, in most countries, it is not your father. It is the cheater. It will never look after you. Mm. So you have to protect yourself <coughs> by yourself. There's, you know, no one to s- to stand up for you. Mm. Uh, certainly, that's not my experience here. Um. Yeah, I think uh, <coughs> I think definition uh, of slavery. If if I take eighty percent of your salary, yeah, yeah, that's that's. Uh, if I understand it correctly, that's slavery. And uh, some people with larger brain than me have done the the math on what in Norway and taxes and, and mm-hmm. uh, taxes on food and everything. Oh, and Norway clocks in between seventy eight and seventy nine. So we, we have it. Yeah, because if you're gonna even if you go go buy grocery or gasoline or electric, whatever you know. So we are one percent. One to two percent away for reaching definition that we are slaves of our government. Mm. And that's a bit crazy, you know. I think capitalism had its time in yeah. that way. But again, there could be new solutions to that with, with the changes. <coughs> I don't want to predict the future. No, no, it's we easy. have understood that socialism was not the best solution mm. and capitalism has served its end. We can mm. see it today mm. with the financial crisis that are expected to come. In America, I think it's um, 41 million people living in poverty. 41 yeah. million people out of 350 million. Yeah, but that and, doesn't and, surprise and, me. and we call that a fair world? Yeah, it's not a fair world. If um, you're born in a wrong house there, you have no fucking chance. Yeah. It doesn't depend on the strength of the country. You know, poverty and malnourishment of, of children is everywhere. Mm. Un- mi- miseducation is everywhere. Ignorance is everywhere. It doesn't depend on where you live. 
Um, That's just human nature. But more the capitalist system, more severe it gets mm. in terms of its uh, damages. We, w- we will find a medium way, I think, between the two. Mm. Because we now know that doesn't help either. No. Capitalism doesn't help either. How did we come to capitalism from oh, yoga? I'm crazy. not sure. But <laughs> one thing I would uh, like to ask you is um, you are living your dream, your purpose. I believe so. Yeah. Mm. Why? What happened? When 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 did you find out that I'm not gonna work as a lawyer or whatever? You know, you you find out okay, I'm gonna live different. What? I think what it was. Made a, you do it? I think it was a stage of life. I was in my thirties when I came to yoga. If you ask me to do yoga or to give up my lifestyle in my twenties, I wouldn't have. There were things to be lived and there were things to be experienced. But as I matured in my 30s, um, I went around the world and um, I have realized that there was more to life than my day-to-day job in London. I was living in London at the time and I was in the center of the you know sales and marketing world and commercials. What did, what did you work with? I, I worked for, um, for a company that has provided qualifications to vocational education. Vocational education is when you become a plumber or an, or an electrician, not the ac- academic route, oh. but the ones you use your hands with. Yeah. So England has an authority on that education, um, a standard setting agency for those industries. So I worked for them and I was able to meet many industry, uh, you know, sort of uh, students and and masters of that industry if, if, if you know yeah. if you like it was a charity in the way that it was owned by prince philip but we also had a you know like a commercial aspect we had to deliver numbers and sales i was part of the sales team a beautiful office in the city good you know good salary living the english way of living going to pub you know, going out, shopping and... Tea and biscuits. Tea and biscuits, uh. 50 of them a day over your desk. Uh, as everything in life, that comes with a lot of benefits. Of As a young woman, I was very happy with myself in the way that I made it there. Um, but then after my travels, I realized life can't be just about 9 to 5 job and achieving sales targets and... I couldn't see my next 40 years like that. It was like a rat race, you know, you, you take the metro and you feel awful. By the time you get to work, you're so tired from the metro. Every Friday you walk on the, you know, eggshells of having delivered your sales targets or not. Uh, you find yourself hundred you know, miles away from London on a sales meeting on a Friday night. It's a lot. <laughs> so, I've decided um, to see the world further, but I wasn't going to be staying on the beach all day. I didn't want to have a holiday as such. So I became as an English teacher. So I could work while I was traveling. That, that, that was my plan. And um, then I came to Norway. <laughs> and um, I searched for jobs and I thought, do I really want to go back to the office world? There were some opportunities here in the city. I thought, do I want that? And um, how about doing what I already practiced, that is yoga? What about introducing people to that? I never thought about whether it would bring income or not. I, I could live with little somehow. After London years, that was my um, new challenge, and I was embracing that challenge. I, I knew how much I needed to live and I didn't uh, it's um we come to that stage don't we we kind of sort of live through to understand what is necessary what is not yes and if you cut the unnecessary you don't need much no so financial aspect was never an issue for me to begin with and uh but that itself worked out good too at the end you have a beautiful studio down there 
Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. That studio has only been used for that purpose. Have sold. Nothing else. Yeah, a special studio. For special sure. studio. Um, it built up its own energy over the years through the yoga practice we have performed there. It bi- it built up itself. Uh, it's not me. It's the people who've been there who built that energy. It's a it's a it's a place of learning. It's a place of working out. It's a place of philosophical discussions, scientific discussions. It's a place where people get one hour to themselves, and that means a lot to them. Mm. Most of them are mothers, most of them are fathers, and they're busy, as you say. They are running from one thing to another. That one hour they couldn't get at home without the distraction from the family. Mm. So they choose to come down there for an hour to feel that. And it's important for them. How did you end up in Norway and Holland? Uh, it was a romance yeah. story. <laughs> yeah, romance. A man from the good Hawaii. old. Yeah, the good old. Uh, it brings us here somehow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, because it was a crazy place to drive. If you travel around the world, how about yeah, Norway? I, d- I was in I my childhood years thinking about one place I want to live is somewhere. That was not my no. <laughs> goal as such. But no, I really enjoy the city. It's absolutely fine. And it took me some time to get used to after London, of course. It's, it's much quieter and smaller. Mm. But again, as we age, I think we appreciate different things in life. Me also to me is wonderful. And it's the real luxury to me after London years. It's It just depends what you seek. It suits my lifestyle yeah. very much. Yeah. But my younger years may have thought differently about it, but now it's perfect. It's uh, it's been ten years. Isn't that all the life is about? You know, I, I see um, see my life in in chapters. Sometimes I close one and I open a new one. You know, and uh, maybe the clue is to know when to close one and open a new. Yeah. Yeah. Be you, you need to be able to say, okay, this is this. I closed it and I start something new because if I'm going to live tomorrow, I cannot live for 10 years ago. If I live the both, I, I think I will not move in a different direction. If you get too comfortable, nothing changes. Yeah. So occasional radical changes are good, whether you move a city or move a country. Mm. I've always done that in my life. Somehow I've been in that w- in that way. Mm. Um, it's not easy for everyone to start from scratch. Yeah. But in my younger years, it exhilarated me. I wanted to do that. I wanted to create something from scratch. But nowadays I'm more secure. I want to remain in one place a bit longer. Um, I do always love that to start with scrap. But put me in a corner. Mm. Then, then I'm blossom, you know, give me no. So, so I always liked it, and and uh, that's one other thing I dislike with my life now is uh, because I have my kids and everything. Uh, it's not that easy yeah. to just because I love to run away, just yeah. buy a ticket and go. No plans, no nothing. Come as and take fresh. it as it comes. Oh, perfect. It's very fresh. And even to be broken down to the bone. Yeah. It's perfect. Start up again. I have been a traveler all my life. And then I heard something beautiful on somewhere I read. The longest distance you can travel is between your head and the heart. Mm. <laughs> Literally, they have pointed the distance between the two. Yeah. I, I, I agree. <laughs> That's the longest journey. Yeah. Um, for some people, that journey is uh, more rewarding than seeing the world. Yeah. Understandably. Hmm. I think maybe we're going to round up now. But uh, I hope we can do this again. Hope so. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, people have to use uh, the comment section. And if they want to ask something or something we can talk about later. I'm very glad I met you. I have a, yeah, I had a very nice time. And you're Thank a you. beautiful human being, and uh, this is uh, meant a lot. And I hope uh, the listeners enjoyed it as well. Thanks so much. Thanks.